1959, the island nation of Cuba saw the end of the six-year conflict known as the Cuban Revolution. Following the victory of Fidel Castro and the overthrow of the U.S.-backed Fulgencio Batista, relations between the U.S. and Cuba declined quickly, very quickly. Not only was this new government proclaiming communist values, something the U.S. had very clearly aligned itself against, it was also nationalizing U.S. interests in the country and becoming allies with the Soviet Union. The prospect of a Soviet ally right on the doorstep of the U.S. was not something the American government was too keen on, so almost immediately there were plans forming to either cause or force the overthrow of Castro's government. Of course, there is the well-known Bay of Pigs invasion where the U.S. enlisted Cuban exiles to essentially storm the beaches of Cuba in order to cause an overthrow of the government. The plan, originally funded and created in Eisenhower's administration and put into place during Kennedy's, was an absolute abject failure. Not only did it not cause the overthrow of the Cuban government, it actually strengthened it, making Castro even more of a hero in the eyes of the Cuban people. Less than a year after the failed Bay of Pigs invasion, though, there was another series of attacks known as Operation Mongoose, which was authorized by President Kennedy on November 30th of 1961. The idea was that the CIA carried out acts of sabotage and terrorism against Cuba, including many attempts to assassinate Fidel Castro himself. There's a lot in Operation Mongoose, but one of the relevant points for this video is that it actually had its own plans for false flag attacks. Now, real quick, what is a false flag attack? A false flag attack, or false flag operation, is basically when a country or organization attacks itself or someone else and blames the attack on an entirely different party. The idea comes from pirates and privateers that would fly friendly flags in order to draw merchant ships closer to them, only for the attacking ship to change its flag to its true one right before attacking. Anyways, so Operation Mongoose had a few plans, including making it seem that Guantanamo Bay, a U.S. military base on Cuba, was under attack, blaming the Cubans if somehow the spacecraft carrying John Glenn crashed, and even attacking Trinidad, Tobago, and Jamaica themselves, but blaming Cuba in order to draw in the U.K., seeing as both of those countries were a part of the Commonwealth. None of these happened, of course, but there was an even more fleshed out plan to cause a war between Cuba and America, Operation Northwoods. Operation Northwoods was proposed after many failures to try and cause the Cuban government to be overthrown from the inside. The entire memorandum is only 15 pages long, so if you want to look it up and read it, it won't take very long. In this document, there were nine different plans to justify a war with Cuba. Number one carry out U.S. military provocations near Cuba under the guise that they are just military training. Ideally, for the U.S., this would cause Cuba to respond aggressively, to which the U.S. could say that the Cubans attacked an otherwise non-hostile training mission and justify a war with that. Number two, staging Cuban defectors working with the U.S. outside of Guantanamo Bay and having them attack Guantanamo Bay. After the fake assailants were captured, more Cuban defectors would start riots outside the base, eventually leading to another fake attack on the base, mortars being fired into the base, fires being started, and even included a plan for fake funerals and fake victims of the fake attack. Number 3. Basically, remember the main part 2. The document even puts the idea forward like that. The U.S. would essentially just have a ship somewhere around Cuba, have it blow up, and blame Cuba. Number four, cause terror campaigns in the Miami or Washington area, uh, foster fake attempts at the lives of Cuban refugees, set off carefully placed bombs, and even, and this is the most disturbing part to me, sink real or simulated ships of Cuban refugees fleeing Cuba. Number five, have Cuban planes that aren't actually Cuban planes attack neighboring Caribbean countries. 6. Harass U.S. shipping and destroy U.S. drones with U.S. planes made to look like Cuban MiG fighter jets. Number 7. 
attempt hijacks under the guise that they are by Cuban government supporters and being directly pushed by the Cuban government. Number 8. A very detailed plan that involved taking two civilian aircraft and making them look exactly the same, except one would be piloted remotely with no one in it and the other would be filled with real people. The plane with the real people would take off from the normal airport, supposedly heading to somewhere like Panama or Jamaica, but would eventually go and land at an auxiliary US airbase. And the drone piloted plane would fly the rest of the way over Cuba. Then, while over Cuba, it would play an automated message saying something to the extent of Mayday, we are under attack by what appears to be a Cuban MiG aircraft. I repeat, that's a Cuban aircraft, as in, from Cuba. The Cuban military. The Cuban military is definitely attacking us. And then be blown up remotely to make it seem like it had been shot down. Number nine, make it seem like Cuban MiGs destroyed a US military aircraft in an unprovoked attack. Now, President Kennedy did not like these plans whatsoever and rejected them entirely, which is a good thing regardless, but especially a good thing here because these plans were brought forward in March of 1962 less than a year before the Cuban Missile Crisis. So when we talk about what could have happened if Operation Northwoods had been put into effect at any time, that's something we'll have to consider. So what if it did go into effect? Well this is going to get very speculative and this is just my opinion so feel free to disagree, but as I see it, there are a bunch of different ways that this whole situation could go down if the US were to justify a war with Cuba and then go to war. With Situation 1, where the US military puts Operation Northwoods into effect before the Cuban Missile Crisis even begins, which would give them about 4-6 to six months before there were any nuclear weapons or preparations for nuclear weapons in or around Cuba. If the US military had justified a war against Cuba and attacked them within that time frame, which would be pretty tight, in all likelihood it would have just led to the fall of the Cuban government. I see it as sort of a local Vietnam that would go a lot worse for the Cubans. Vietnam was on the other side of the world and had allies much closer to it. I'm sure the Soviets would do their best to support Cuba, but from what I've seen and read, Khrushchev, the leader of the Soviet Union at the time, was not about to needlessly get into a war with the US, especially if the justification for war seemed legitimate, which was the point of Operation Northwoods. With this, I see it as leading to a replacement of the communist Cuban government with a US puppet government, and possibly leading to more direct involvement elsewhere in Latin America, and maybe even a tighter sphere of influence than the US had in our timeline. Of course, this would also lead to the Cuban Missile Crisis not happening, which would also lead to the same cooling of tensions that we saw after the crisis also not happening. And so we could end up seeing tensions flare hotter somewhere else leading to a crisis or a missile crisis elsewhere in the world. With Situation 2, if the Cuban Missile Crisis is already underway and the Soviet Union has already made its September 11th decree that an attack by the US would mean war with the Soviet Union, I really don't see them even trying to justify a war with Cuba at the time. At this point, it would be suicide to invade it under any circumstances. If they did try and invade, I see one of two results happening. One nuclear annihilation, plain and simple. Two, no nuclear annihilation. Maybe some light use of tactical nukes, I'm not really sure, but I do believe the Soviet Union would absolutely take West Berlin as a form of compensation almost. Whether or not this leads to all-out war, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm sure it would absolutely put the world very close to nuclear annihilation, if not drawing us right there. Kennedy, who frequently opposed the Joint Chiefs of Staff about whether or not they should invade Cuba, said, They know more than we can let these things go by without doing something. They can't, after all their statements, permit us to take out their missiles, kill a lot of Russians, and then do nothing. If they don't take action in Cuba, they certainly will in Berlin. And I'm inclined to agree. With Situation 3, if they do it after the Soviets had made their deal with the US about pulling out of Cuba, then there would actually be an even greater chance of war, in my opinion. At least if it was right after the deal. Getting straight information on this was difficult, but from what I can tell, there were about 100 tactical nukes that had been snuck into Cuba 
without the US noticing because the US never demanded those weapons be removed. They weren't very large or long range in comparison to other weapons, but apparently they could still reach Florida and were 100 times the power of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb, so still fairly formidable. Eventually those weapons were also taken out of Cuba, but because the US didn't apparently know about them, then they could have theoretically invaded Cuba before they were taken out. Now, from what I can tell, Castro did not have control of these weapons, so if not, the US would just invade, take over the country, find these nukes, question the Soviets about them, but ultimately it wouldn't be a whole lot different than Situation 1 most likely. However, if Castro either did have or somehow got control of those nukes, he would absolutely use them to defend his country, and possibly even nuke Florida specifically, which I could see very quickly escalating into a full nuclear exchange as the Americans would probably believe that it was the Soviets who had launched the nukes. If the US had invaded any time after those tactical nukes were out of Cuba, I imagine things would have gone basically the same as Situation 1, maybe just worse diplomatically because they would have gone back on their promise not to invade Cuba especially if it was discovered that the justification was falsified. All of this being said, there is one key thing to remember here. This never would have happened. Kennedy was advised many, many times to invade Cuba, and the only time he did was when it wasn't even his plan. Kennedy hated the Cuban government and the Soviet government and communists, but he wasn't a moron who believed that every situation needed to be met with force. Kennedy himself said that attacking Cuba at that point would make the US look like trigger-happy cowboys. The US did get very close to war with Cuba and with the Soviet Union, yes, but never would I see a situation where Kennedy approves any sort of false flag operation against the Cuban government specifically to go to war. While false flag operations are no stranger to the US, I am very glad this one stayed nothing more than a plan, because who knows what could have happened. I am more than happy with the world not being irradiated by nuclear war. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment with your thoughts. All of that really helps me out. Also, if you want to support this channel, I've linked my Patreon on the screen and below in the description. And if you want to see what's going on with me outside of YouTube, go follow my Twitter. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.